Coming up, I'm going to share with you proven ways to secure your digital content. As an entrepreneur, you know that your content is one of your most valuable assets. Your content is the expression of your talent, expertise, and value. In today's digital world, the widespread availability of your content provides a marketplace for attracting interest. It also provides opportunities for others to steal it, use it without your permission, or even take credit for it. That's why, as an entrepreneur, it's crucial that you take steps to protect your content with copyright and trademark rights. Are you like so many other businesses who have no idea what copyright and trademark law is all about? Stay tuned. You're about to learn everything you need to know to get started. Hi there. I'm attorney Randy Carpinia, and I'm an expert in all things intellectual property. One of the most important things you can do for your business is to protect your content, whether it's a blog post, video, ebook, photo, or any other content. Taking steps to secure it is key. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the best ways to do just that. So whether you're a small business owner or an entrepreneur just starting out, pay close attention to the advice in this video. It could save you a lot of trouble down the road. If you're new to my channel, now would be a brilliant time to click the subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications so that you receive an alert every time I post a new episode of the series, The Top Secrets to Protecting Your Uniqueness by Attorney Randy. And if you've missed any past episodes, no worries. Check them out in the same playlist. Okay, so you wanna learn how to secure your digital content? Great. Here are your success steps for getting started. So we started to talk, we talked quite a bit about content, so let's see what what I plan to tell you about content best practices. Okay, this is, this is, I should trademark this term. I'm constantly telling people to remember their no trespassing sign. So remember how I said there's things you want to register, but then Tammy mentioned how her trademark changed over time, things change over time. So there are no trespassing signs you can use today while you're number one deciding is this permanent and number two budgeting for the cost of doing actual registrations and some things you'll never register. So the first, it, first no trespassing sign we've talked about, you should put a copyright notice on all of your content. If you notice at the bottom, I don't, if you can see my whole screen at the bottom of every single slide, I have a copyright notice. That is just a good practice. Have I registered this presentation? No, of course not. I created this for you guys, but I put you on notice that it's copyright, that you can't take your phone. And I've had this happen in presentations and someone will take a, a picture of it, right, of the slide. Well, you can if you're using it for yourself, but that's it, right? So putting copyright notices on your website, on and your, that should cover your blog posts, like you mentioned, Tammy, on your eBooks, on your mater materials that you provide to your clients, puts people, it's exactly what it does. There's no trespassing. It says, it's mine. And like I said, I do have one client who actually goes to the point of, like I think it was Ann said, do not use for anything but your own purpose. <laughs> he even puts it in the title, like if he's sharing a Google sheet, because sometimes he does spreadsheets for his clients, it's in the title of the Google sheet when you open up Google. So I'm not saying you have to, but at least put a copyright notice. Okay, trademarks. So Tammy talked about how she's working on getting registered trademarks for some of her marks. But even right now, you can put a no trespassing sign on taglines, phrases, business names, anything that's your brand, logos if you have one. And the way you can do that, I'm presuming you're all coaches, would be to put a superscript capital S capital M after each of those things. So it's usually in the top right of whatever the name, the logo, the phrase is. So if you see, you've probably seen it a lot. So a TM is for goods. 
like a pocketbook or furniture, and then SM is for services. If you're not sure, you can use a TM, but SM is just better with services. So you've probably seen many, many times a TM or an SM, and you think they have a registered trademark. They don't. When they get the registered trademark, they're going to put the R with the circle. And as an aside, never, never, never put the registration R if you're not registered. I've had clients come to me to register. SM stands for service mark. TM stands for trademark. This is a sign, never use the R unless you have a registration because that's actually fraud on the trademark office and, and that comes with some hefty fines. So you don't want to do that. I, I, I get a lot of clients who, I, that's the first thing I have to do is take that down. We talked about terms and conditions for your website, super important. You can lay out for a visitor what they can and cannot do with your material. And the thing is, that those terms then give you the ability to send a cease and desist letter if a client or if a website visitor is doing something they shouldn't. You could even litigate, but most of us won't do that. So really important to have good, solid terms and conditions. Um, and then, like I had already said, so I'm repeating myself, link those terms and conditions to your social media to any, and, and you know, anywhere really that, that you feel it's, it makes sense, okay? Um, by the way, and um, Tammy, you may or may not have noticed it, I've now, I have website terms and conditions, which are my terms and conditions for my content, but I also have contractual terms and conditions. They are not the same. And those contractual terms and conditions I have a new URL. This is my new thing because I've just done it for myself and I'm starting to tell clients. So you're like very early hearing this. Um, and on my invoices in where it says terms, I put the URL because there's never room on your invoices for a really long thing. So the contractual terms are a little bit different from your content terms. Take a moment now to think about your content. What's your biggest question about copyright or trademark protection? Drop a comment to this video and I'll respond to every single one. Next up, you're going to learn the most important lines of defense when creating your own content. You can't afford to not learn these secrets. Okay, so let's talk about content. And I know this can be uncomfortable to people. When you're creating your own content, I highly, highly recommend using your own unique content, whether that's an image on a social media post, an article or blog post you're writing. You know, I say the first line of defense, but it's more like this is this should be what you default to. The default should be using your own content as much as possible. Now, there's a, for you guys, there's a slight change to that and that Tammy has given you a non-exclusive license to use hers, in, but it's hers. But anything you're creating, I always say it's better to have a B plus content than get sued by a A plus or A minus owner. So if you don't have permission, don't use it. Um, I'm gonna give the example a free image site. Free does not mean free. Easy to access does not mean you can use it. Many of the free image sites say for your own personal use. As soon as you stick that onto your business page or onto an ebook that you write or client materials, you've breached that. I've even seen licensed content, licensed photos and images that when I read the terms of the license, they're not, I just actually had that happen two weeks ago. Someone came to me for a logo trademark. And my first question is always, where did it come from? And their brand designer said, sent me, said, oh yeah, we own it. I have a license to this portion of the logo. And when I read it, it literally said, prohibited to be used for trademarks. So it's, it's really best to try to use all of your own content, your own photos, your own images, 
And if you if you find this like phenomenal stuff that you want to use, whether it's an image or it's a content, get permission. I have many clients who are like tutors and trainers, and they've gone to, you know, these companies that have whatever materials they need, and they've gotten permission. Sometimes they don't. It's kind of a hit or miss, but get permission to use it if it's that important to you and get that permission in writing. Don't phone them up. That's one of the examples where you don't want to get on a phone call. You want it in writing, email, you want an email. So here's the third line of defense. I'm giving you some homework. You need, if you do not know where something came from, whether it be your personal Facebook, um, feed or your business website, take it down. I'm really, really serious about that. Sit at night with a glass of wine or in front of the TV, go through your Facebook feed and all those cute little images that you, you saw somewhere and you, you put on, you know, maybe a, a happy new year, whatever it is, delete it because you can and will be sued or a cease and desist letter will be sent at some point. I've had clients and I think that's actually one of my examples. Um, so it's really important, not only for your business, but for your personal, just get rid of any content that you don't know about. Coming up in the next episode, I'm going to share with you the key moments where entrepreneurs should use a legal professional. You don't want to miss it. So if you haven't subscribed yet, here's that link so you can do so. And get the alerts each time I drop a new video in the top secrets to protecting your uniqueness. Bye, Attorney Randy. I'll see you in the next episode.